One of Udvar Hazi's hidden gems is its pristine spacesuit vault. But getting the suits to their new digs required some creative problem solving. We have a collection of about 280 spacesuits. The suits had been stored um, at Garber initially under very crowded conditions. Transporting 280 spacesuits out the door and over to Udvar Hazi posed a rather unusual challenge. Well, we wanted to have them on trays, but going on trays, how do you transport them? Do you strap them down? If you strap them down too tightly, you're going to damage the suits. So the move team came up with an unusual solution, coffin boxes. A coffin is far bigger than a human, so you could get a suit with very large shoulders into a coffin box. And they were absolutely perfect for moving spacesuits because some of the spacesuits are fairly heavy. Uh, so this was a way to move them around safely, support them, keep them on their handling trays, and then put it directly into storage. But sometimes, even under optimal storage conditions, things can go wrong. The problem with spacesuits is that they're made of complex materials that were not created to last for a very long period of time. I'm gonna step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. When Neil Armstrong walked on the moon in 1969, he wore custom-made gloves featuring stainless steel fabric and blue silicone fingertips. When the gear was put on display to commemorate Armstrong's life, one glove developed mysterious spots on the cuff. There seemed to be spots where something had been painted on. The interesting thing is that in the case of Neil Armstrong's gloves, it's only on the right glove. So this is what I think the clean weave looks like. OK, so. What we're working on right now is trying to determine what was applied, who applied it, and when it happened. And this is part of documenting the history of the suit. Today, Kathy is meeting with conservator Lisa Young and Bill Arry, a rep from the suit's manufacturer, to look for an answer. So today we're looking at the coatings on the surface of the glove. I mean, it is whiter in that area. Like, you can see, like, even around that abrasion. It's like it, like, almost flowed away from the tear. The white material is called beta cloth. And we're using a new piece of equipment that we actually got in the lab, a 3D microscope. Is that the Yeah, this the is the tear. Line? I mean, that's right just going to be the Teflon. Or this is the edge of the coating right there. So it's going this way. Yeah. Now what we're thinking is that the spot repairs were done to freeze snags that had occurred in the cuff. And what we think we see, we're not sure, um, is lunar dust that has been caught underneath. This is where I'm seeing like the swipes of the moon dust underneath that got on the fibers. Right. That would tell me that this coating was added after post-mission. Not anticipating it would have come right to the Smithsonian and figure out which way the greens. Lunar dust is very sticky, very sharp, very aggressive. It will attack materials that we just never even thought about. You see the woven fibers crisscrossing each other in there, which is really like pretty cool. As it turns out, the impacted materials were metal fibers in the spacesuits, which acted as magnets for the iron-based lunar dust. So we discovered a new history that we didn't even know about. But it looks very angular and glass. I mean, it doesn't yeah, look it like does. normal dust to me. Right. And these yeah, are things so that might seem very small, but are very important to missions to the moon, to Mars. So we're contributing to the history and contributing to the future as well, which is really exciting.